a one and a half year old boy was taken by his parents facility for immunization following which the child had seizures an hour later and went into altered sensorium the father hurled abuses on the staff and even lodged an fir unfortunately the child succumbed to his illness post mortem report was suggestive of intracranial bleed so do you want to know about the adverse effects following immunization this video shall also touch catch up immunization schedule of a completely unimmunized child or a child who has received just one dose of vaccine before that i would like to just take a moment to thank everyone who is a part of my endeavor for child health as evident the channel aims to clear basic concepts and keep you updated with the latest i am overwhelmed with so much love appreciation and respect and this is what keeps me going despite being so very busy on the chair i am at considering the large amount of time which is required in searching preparing animating and then presenting the content for you so an adverse effect following immunization is any untoward medical occurrence which follows immunization and which does not necessarily have a causal relationship with the usage of the vaccine per se वैक्सीन के बाद होता है वैक्सीन से होता है ऐसा जरूरी नहीं है सो इट कैन बी रिलेटेड टू आइदर वैक्सीन प्रोडक्ट दैट इज कॉज और प्रेसिपिटेटेड बाय अ वैक्सीन ड्यू टू वन और मोर ऑफ इट्स इंग्रेडिएंट्स और इट्स प्रॉपर्टीज एंड जनरली दीज काइंड ऑफ ए ई एफ आई आर नॉट सीरियस वैक्सीन क्वालिटी रिलेटेड इंक्लूडिंग द क्वालिटी ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन डिवाइस इम्यूनाइजेशन एरर रिलेटेड फॉर एग्जाम्पल infection transmitted by contaminated multidose vials immunization anxiety related for example a vasovagal syncope in an anxious adolescent or it could just be a coincidental event for example post vaccination fever due to malaria so was the scenario which i had discussed earlier on investigation in our hospital the child had markedly elevated pta ptt inr which could have led to possible intracranial bleed and that the child was sick 3 days prior to the illness as well as revealed by the parents later there are three types of aefi depending on the severity they can be serious which may result in death or hospitalization or significant or persistent disability as was the case discussed earlier severe which for example after dpt injections we expect a swelling we might expect a swelling at the site of injection but sometimes if the swelling is so severe that it crosses beyond the nearest joint then in that case it is referred to as severe aefi or it could be just minor for example local or even systemic reactions like fever etc so as per the reporting algorithm whenever there is an aefi then in that case the patient the doctor should report straight away as in uh, urban areas or via a medical officer at the primary health center via a case reporting format within 24 hours to the district immunization officer this is where the duty of the primary doctor generally ends the district immunization officer in turn verifies the case properly and within the next 24 hours he will send the case to the state immunization officer or the expanded program of immunization officer along with informing the immunization division of ministry of health and family welfare then this in turn within 10 days shall inform the state level and the national level aefi committees then the district aefi committee within 100 days of notification of this aefi will send the final report in the form of final case investigation form to the state aefi committee giving its opinion on the probable diagnosis the causality ex assessment experts of the state aefi committee shall discuss all the reports available give a diagnosis and classify the case as per who classification and a proportion of these cases should can be causally assessed by the national aefi committee coming on to the common and serious adverse effects following immunization first is vaccine associated paralytic polio caused by the opv virus it is basically an acute onset flaccid paralysis occurring within 4 to 30 days of receipt of opv 
or within 4 to 75 days after contact with a vaccine recipient of OPV along with isolation of virus and absence of wild polio virus in the stool or neurological deficits remaining for 60 days after the onset or death. There is no specific treatment of this adverse event following immunization. Another a commoner one is anaphyloctoid reaction and this can be seen with any of the vaccines. It generally occurs within 2 hours of immunization and is characterized by wheezing, shortness of breath, laryngospasm or skin manifestations. It is generally self-limiting and the maximum you would require is antihistamines. Then anaphylaxis which again can be caused by any of the vaccines and this is generally a serious form of uh, AEFI in the sense that in anaphylactoid we had respiratory manifestations whereas in anaphylaxis these respiratory manifestations can in turn lead to circulatory collapse or shock. So this is potentially dangerous and fatal. The treatment of choice is epinephrine and here I would like to give a small uh, explanation of how to use the epinephrine. The vial which is available to us is generally 1 is to 1000 ml concentration. So we take 1 ml of this vial and dilute it with 10 ml of normal saline and give 0.01 ml per kg of this diluted solution. 0.01 ml per kg roughly amounts to 0.1 ml in up to 20 kg's birth weight, 20 kg's body weight, uh, 0.2 ml in up to 30 kg's body weight, 0.3 ml in up to 40 kg's body weight, 0.4 ml in up to 50 kg's body weight and 0.5 ml thereafter. 0.5 ml is the maximum dose of epinephrine which you can give and you can repeat the dose again. The, third com the fourth common AEFI is arthralgia which is generally seen after vaccination with rubella or MMR and the treatment is generally symptomatic. Disseminated BCG infection can also be seen with BCG and the treatment is administering anti-tuberculous drugs including isoniazid and rifampicin. Encephalopathy can be seen with measles and pertussis but is generally not serious and the management is conservative and symptomatic. Then HHE or hypotonic hyporesponsive episodes these are seen with uh, DPT. These are generally transient and self-limiting. No specific treatment is required per se and this is also not a contraindication to further doses of the vaccine though you can you should be cautious about the same in future doses. Another com other common AEFIs are prolonged seizures and crying, even febrile seizures seen with DTWP that is whole cell pertussis component, thrombocytopenia seen with measles and intussusception sometimes seen with rotavirus. Now I would like to say a word about catch-up immunization because I have seen that many doc even doctors leave sisters, they are not aware of in of actually in what schedule should a child be immunized if he has not received any vaccine in the past or if he has received just one vaccine. So if the child presents to you within one month of age but more than 24 hours of life then in that case you have to administer two vaccines only BCG and OPV both of which can be given up to five years of age. Between one to six months of age then you have to at the first visit which is referred to as the zero day, you have to give BCG, PENTA1, fractional IPV1, OPV1, RV1 and PCV1. The next visit which is four weeks later that is roughly at around one month, you have to give PENTA2, OPV2 and RV2. And on the third visit which is around four weeks later again that is at roughly at around two months from the first visit, you have to give PENTA3, fractional IPV2, OPV3. RV3 and pneumococcal conjugate vaccine 3, sorry 2. In 6 to 12 months of age, ideally you should not use pentavalent which I shall tell you later. So at the first visit which is referred to as the zero day, you have to give DPT, hepatitis B, HIB, all these three, uh, these four that is DPT these five that is DPT, hepatitis B and HIV are actually a part of pentavalent but you should preferably give them separately if the child has come to you after six months of age. Then you also have to give fractional IPV, PCV and then there are two new additions MR and JE especially if the child is more than nine months of age. 
Remember, if the child is more than nine months of age, you have to give MR and JE in case you are in the endemic area for Japanese encephalitis. TCV as two doses can be given to any child more than six months of age at zero and four weeks later. So on the second visit, which is roughly around four weeks later, that is one month apart, you should give DPT and hepatitis B and you should give TCV2. And on the next visit, which is four weeks later again, that is eight on eight weeks from the zero day, you have to give DPT3, hepatitis B3, fractional IPV3 and PCV. Here I would like to mention that this is the final schedule which you need to give to babies who are presenting unimmunized between 6 to 12 months of age and the fact that hepatitis B is given in a schedule of 0-1-6 months ideally but in case you are calling the patient successively after every month for 3 doses of DPT then in that case you can give hepatitis B on 0-1-2 in 0-1-2 schedule itself. Then hemophilus influenzae B between 6 to 12 months the schedule is you have to administer 2 doses one month apart along with one booster dose at 15 months of age and fractional IPV is given at 0 and 2 and 6 months of age, 0, 2 and 6 months. Between 12 to 23 months of age, on the first visit you need to give BCG, DPT, Hepatitis B, A, Hib, fractional IPV, PCV, MR, J, E and typhoid conjugate vaccine. Hepatitis A and TC, T, Hepatitis A basically is a new addition at this age. Varicella is also given at this stage but you may avoid giving it with the measles vaccine because both are live attenuated vaccines and uh, typhoid conjugate vaccine which can be given to infants beyond 6 months of age can be administered beyond 2 months of age in a single dose only. On the next visit which is 1 month later you have to give DPT, Hepatitis B, MRJ, fractional IPV and PCV are administered at 2 months later. And at six months later, you have to give DPT, hepatitis B, A and fractional IPV. So this is the final schedule of the vaccines which need to be administered. What you must remember is that varicella is given at two doses of varicella are given at three months of at a gap of three months, but preferably not with measles. Similar for two to five years of age again, these are the vaccines which you need to give and on the first visit. These are the vaccines you need to give on the second visit one month later and the vaccines which you need to give on the third visit that is six months later. And this is the final schedule of the catch-up immunization for a child who is unimmunized and presenting to you for the first time between two to five years of age. And again must remember that varicella two doses need to be given at a gap of three months but preferably to be avoided with the measles vaccine itself. So you can basically give it at the third visit between two to five years of age and at more than five years of age you have to give dpt or tdap if the child is more than seven years of age hepatitis b a measles je typhoid hpv and pcv vaccines at the first visit on the second visit which is at one month of age you have to give dpt in less than five years in less than seven years of age and td in more than seven years of age, hepatitis B, A, hepatitis, uh, measles and JE in an endemic area. And at the third visit, which is at six months from the first visit, you have to give DPT in less than seven, DT in more than, TD in more than seven years of age, hepatitis B and A. And this is the final catch-up schedule of a child who is unimmunized and presenting to you for the first time after five years of age. And must also remember that two vaccines can have to be given after five years of age hpv specifically between 9 to 14 years of age and not before nine years of age in a two dose schedule at zero and six months and at age group more than 15 years and in immunocompromised schedule a three dose schedule at zero months one to two months and six months varicella between five to twelve years of age is given at a two dose schedule of three at a gap of three months and at more than 13 years of age Two doses are given at a gap of one month. What vaccines are not administered are BCG, OPV, Hib and Rotavirus after five years of age. More than 10 years of age, which is also referred to as adolescent immunization and is frequently asked in your exams and for useful for your practice as well. On the first visit, 
you have to administer Tdap, hepatitis B, A, measles, typhoid, HPV and PCV. At the next visit which is at one month later, you have to give hepatitis B, measles and J. And at the second visit which is six months later, you have to give hepatitis B and A only. This is the final schedule of the catch-up vaccination. And what you must remember is again HPV and varicella vaccines. I guess a lot of concepts would have become clear with this video and this will help you in your OPD consultation as well as in writing your exams. Thank you so very much for uh, your patient listening and watching and please do share the knowledge for better understanding. Thank you.